Nowadays, there is no age limit for orthodontic treatment. The practitioners will therefore be confronted in the office with type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes patients. The key to any orthodontic treatment for a patient with diabetes is good medical control. Orthodontic treatment should not be performed in a patient with uncontrolled diabetes. If the patient is not in good medical control, that is SbA1c is greater than 9%, every effort should be made to improve the diabetic state before starting orthodontic treatment. For diabetes patients under good medical control, all dental procedures can be performed without special precautions unless complications of diabetes are present. Morning appointments are preferable if a patient is scheduled for a long treatment session that is longer than one and a half an hour. The patient should be advised to eat their usual meal and take their medication as usual. Before the dental procedure starts, the dental team should check whether the patient has fulfilled their recommendations or not. In this way, hypoglycemic reactions in the office can be readily be avoided. There is no treatment preference with regard to fixed or removable appliances. It is important to stress the maintenance of good oral hygiene, especially when fixed appliances are used. Indeed, such appliances may give rise to increased plaque retention, which may in this patient more easily cause tooth decay and periodontal breakdown. Adjuvant daily ranges with a fluoride rich mouth range, preferably before bedtime, can provide further preventive benefits. Candida infections may occur and if present, blood glucose levels should be monitored to rule out the deterioration of the diabetic state. Diabetes-related microangiopathy can occasionally occur in periapical vascular supply resulting in unexplained odontalgia, percussion sensitivity, pulpitis and even loss of vitality of vitality of sound teeth, especially in an orthodontic treatment where forces are applied to move teeth over a significant distance, the practitioner should be alert to this phenomenon and check out on regular basis the vitality of the teeth involved. It is advisable to apply light forces and not to overload the teeth. Periodontal reactions to orthodontic forces were studied by Holt, Crave and Donath. They found a retarded osseous regeneration, a weakening of the periodontal ligament and microangiopathies in the gingival area. The authors concluded that the specific diabetic changes in the periodontium are more pronounced following orthodontic tooth movement. Since diabetic patients and more specifically uncontrolled or poorly controlled diabetic patients have an increased tendency for periodontal breakdown. These patients should be considered in the orthodontic treatment plan as the periodontal patients and the treatment considerations must be accordingly be made. Especially in adults, it is important before the start of orthodontic treatment to obtain a full mouth periodontal examination including probing plaque and gingivitis score and to evaluate the necessity for periodontal treatment. First, the periodontal condition must be improved before any orthodontic treatment can take place. During orthodontic treatment, the orthodontist should monitor the periodontal conditions of patients with diabetes and keep control over the inflammation. As with all orthodontic patients, maintaining strict oral hygiene is very important. If flag control is difficult to achieve with mechanical aids such as toothbrush and interdental brush, the use of disinfectant mouth rinse of the chlorhexidine type act as an adjuvant chemical plaque control can be considered. To minimize the neutralizing effect of the toothpaste on the chlorhexidine molecule, there should be at least a 30-minute interval between toothbrushing and the chlorhexidine rinse. Chlorhexidine is cation and forms salts of low solubility with anions, resulting in a reduced antimicrobial effect.